Just look, here is still the iguana enclosure. This is nuts. This is the backyard. Here's Nugget. Nugget's been doing well. Just to get into Slinky's house, I need rain boots. So look at this, guys. They're actually bobbing around in the water. Lego, are you okay? Everyone's kind of moving slower today. I will let you in on another secret. We're gonna get the black dragons. I talked to Kevin. I'm actually gonna go for two. What's going on everyone? Ken in here on uh, what is a rainy day. It's been a rainy week. It's been raining for as long as I can remember right now. Here uh, we are inside good old Lagatha's abode and there is one elongated tortoise and here is another elongated tortoise. And you'll notice there is no grass. These guys have done their job. Uh, let's go say hello to Lagatha. Hi, Laggy Lou. What's up, kiddo? She's shedding a little bit under her jaw. And uh, you can see she's not puffing up. She's not doing anything. Uh, no jerky movement. She's starting to get more and more used to me. I love coming in here and spending time with her. And there is that tongue flick that we learned from Kevin at Nerd. It means that they're curious and just wondering what's going on. And well, what is going on? Sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's shout out goes to another great supporter, Rainy Parker. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. It has been raining so much that has sucked the life out of me. That today's video is just gonna be a walk and talk, man. We're gonna hang out, I'm gonna show you just what's been going on here at the camp since we've been gone for a while and I wanted to catch you guys up. So uh, first things first, look, here is still the iguana enclosure and it is still in the state it's been in for the last three or four months. Uh, that's because lumber is expensive and uh, well, lumber's expensive. Uh, by the way, did I mention it's been raining? Look at this. This is the backyard and this is why I moved most of the sulcatas to that front area, we'll see them in a little bit, uh, because this just floods incredibly. So uh, here is the back pond. And if we look over here, you'll see that, that our friend Lumpy is doing well, but he's uh, kind of taking a break. He was out walking around earlier. He's just kind of hanging out, taking a break. And uh, man, I don't know. This, this weather has definitely put a damper on my mood. It's hard to get work done. I mean, today I pulled out an old fence and kind of pulled out some weeds and just trying to make it look cleaner. But man, uh, honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. It's been raining here uh, probably for the last week and a half. And uh, that's a long time, man. Now I know a lot of you guys up north deal with gray weather most of the winter, but there's a reason I moved to Florida and that's because I cannot stand, ugh, rainy, rainy, cold, gray weather. Here's Nugget, Nugget's been doing well. Uh, as you can see. And look at how nice and clean this water is. That's because the rain just comes down and it pours out of here and all, all good stuff. And we got those river shrimp from Fluker uh, that this guy's really been digging. I want to give you an update also. Look at this. Look at Just to get into Slinky's house, I need uh, rain boots, water boots, rubber boots. Hey, Slinky. Slinky. Yeah, this is bad. I, I drained that down because I have to clean it out. Slinky's doing good. Where are you, buddy? Oh, look, Slinky's in his house, too. This is nuts, man. I, I almost don't. Ah, come on, let's go over here. I'm going to get rain boots on because I can't even enjoy the backyard. Hmm. Let me uh, show you something else I did. Slinky's doing good. We'll show you him in another video. Uh, so, you know, I've got the leopard tortoises that live here and here. Well, because of the amount of rain, I get nervous about these guys in heavy, heavy rain. I've taken them and I've put them in here with some basking lights. I got my sunspot from Fluker and it's definitely warming them up. You can see they're happy to be under it. Uh, I like to put some kind of rock underneath the uh, light because the rock is gonna hold that heat. So there we go. I kind of threw this up just kind of a really quick cross brace so I can hang this down because I put the South African leopards in Buttercup's house to keep them nice and dry. There's the female and the male must be around back here somewhere. He's around here somewhere, I can tell you. Where is the male? Hmm. Oh boy. Let's see. 
Uh, my goodness. Wow, that's interesting, guys. There he is, right there. So there's the male, and he's just doing his thing. And uh, yeah, I just hope that, oh, I don't know if you guys can see him. There you go. Now we can see him. So that's the deal. Um, I know I've done these rain videos before, and maybe you guys have seen them. Maybe you're new to the channel and you haven't, but it's kind of a good way to show you just the amount of work that needs to be done when animals are dealing with rain. And you can be dealing with water turtles, which is no big deal, obviously, but look at this. Oh yeah, look, we just had a downpour. Let's come over here to the redfoots. Now redfoots can take this wetter weather better. They will still get little bits of that, that little fungus, but look at this guys. They're actually bobbing around in the water. This stuff just floods. Look, there's Lego. Lego, are you okay? I mean, they get along pretty good, guys. Um, there's one over there I'm not even worried about. She's probably just resting. I'm gonna go over there, I'll show you. But that's what happens with this. These guys come from areas where they do get a lot of rain, they get flooding, so they've gotta be able to deal with those conditions, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. No problem. How about Lego, though? Cute little guy. Actually, girl. But, um, oh, the other cool thing is, folks, is I wound up finding out where the uh, one of the male redfoots was climbing out of. It was climbing out from over there, so I was able to brace it. So, see, as I mentioned, this tortoise is fine. She was just taking a break, but I'll tell you what I might need to do. You see, I have this hole here. Let's dig down so we can drain this out. It's such a pain in the neck to have to deal with this much rain and hopefully the rainy season will be over soon it usually lasts till about november so we're still well within the time oh wow that's a root the time for our rainy season so you'll hear me whinge a little bit in this video but i think i think it's warranted whinging i hope you don't mind oh here we go Okay, we got we got water coming out it's the uh cypress mulch tends to clog it there we go i got that root out okay and we are going there is water pouring out jenna i something bet my yeah well you know what everyone says i look like tom hanks why not sound like forrest gump okay we got that going the good news is with all this rain the uh, pond and ponds will take a long time during the dry season to kind of evaporate and water to uh, kind of, you know, what's the word? Dissipate? Who knows? Go down? I don't know. Just a rambling mess I am today. But uh, I give it to you as it comes. No fancy and false storylines just the real stuff here at the camp pinky's doing good there she is hey pinks how you doing sweet pea how's your water doing do i need to drain out now you're looking pretty good still there she is a little poopsa let's go in and show you just how uh awesome she's been getting and i like coming i i whenever i go in i go through this door now as opposed to opening that one because that's the one she gets fed in so let's see what kind of mood she's in Hi, Pinky. Yeah, you came to say hello. Yes, you did. So, Pinky, sorry, scared you, kid. Pinky is um, just tremendous, man. This this friendship is definitely growing. Hi, girl. There you go. There's a lot of trust being built between us, and I like that. And she's very curious, and she likes to hang out with me. So, um, awesome, awesome work here. And that's why I'm so excited to get more monitor lizards. Um, I know I've been talking about it. We're gonna get the black dragons. I talked to Kevin. I'm actually gonna go for two. So we're looking for two black dragons here, uh, which is, man, that's awesome. Um, I really wanna focus on animals that I can interact with and have relationships with. And I tend to do that with my tortoises um, and some of my iguanas, but it just seems like these monitors are just fantastic. Come here, girl. They're just fantastic. And um, I think you guys will agree. They have a lot of character, a lot of interest in me. And I love the fact that I get to do this kind of thing with them. And I really want to kind of learn more about them and learn what they're capable of as far as their intelligence 
It's just one of my most favorite things um, in the last year. Uh, and certainly since, you know, I've gotten slinky, I've just been enamored by them. And even when I was younger, I actually had a mangrove monitor. Uh, we're talking way back in like 1993 and 94. I had a water monitor, I had a mangrove monitor, I've had Nile monitors, and when I was younger, I really did enjoy them. Uh, so it's cool. It's cool to still have them and still be able to do things with them. And I can feel her, she's kind of cool. It's only in the 70s today, so the temperatures are a little bit lower. And I want to try to stand up here a minute. Okay, baby. She kind of uses that tail prehensily, huh? Let's see if I can just walk over here and she might be more inclined to kind of go off onto the log, which might be better for her. Where are you, sweetie? See, I don't even know where she is. So I don't mind hanging out here and just talking and letting her do her thing. Um, there she goes. Good. But it just, you know, it's just so awesome. I know I go on and on. You've been seeing a lot of monitors here on the channel. Um, I don't think you guys mind. Uh, these are lizards that I'm really just uh, enamored with and interested in. So you got to focus on things you're interested in. So that's what I do. I will let you in on another secret, uh, a not so secret secret. I wound up speaking to Stuart from Universal Rocks and it looks like we are going to do something for Slinky in early 2021. So early next year, we're going to just set our sights on making Slinky's house the coolest. I I'm just, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. They're desert boots, but let's get in here. Okay. All right, let me shut this. I'll give you guys that update as I promised. There he is. Hey, Slinks. Come on out and say hello to everyone, will you? Come on out and say hello to everyone. See this, guys? The trust. He gets excited because he thinks he's going to have some food, but no food, just uh, a visit. So he's just inside. Even a water monitor wants to get out of the rain every now and again. And he's just hanging out. So I'm happy. I just drained this out. I'm going to suck out all that gack and I'll refill this. Um, but there's absolutely no uh, lack of water right now. Did that scare you, buddy? I'm sorry. So Slinky's doing awesome. We finished up that medication. Okay, we gave him the three, four days of medication. And um, he just seems to be fine. So again, just to follow up, letting you know, if you haven't seen the video where uh, I saw Slinky getting a little bit constipated, um, I took him to the vet. We got some medication to help him out, and he is good. So Slinky's doing well. Go on. Come out. Show everyone how big and beautiful you are. Come here. There he is, man. Now, can you imagine when we get those black, uh, black dragons to have a full adult male black dragon here at the camp? In about five or six years, we'll have an animal about as big as Slinky, um, which is just <laughs> so crazy. So I'm glad you guys will be along to watch that. Um, for me, I feel like a lot of you guys are long haul uh, Camp Kennan followers, which is cool. And, um, you know, I try and show you everything that happens in my life with these animals. And just to give you guys an idea of the amount of dedication and the amount of uh, work that's entailed in keeping this little reptile zoo going, my little farm sanctuary, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's very important. But everyone's kind of moving slower today because, of course, when it's rainy and cool, reptiles are slower. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Right? You're not hungry, are you? You're always hungry, Slinky. You are always hungry and you are handsome. God, I love this lizard, man. It's just incredible. It is incredible. And I'm so glad you are not sick. So happy you are a good boy. All right? So I'm getting, liz I'm getting Slinky kisses right now. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, don't go putting your face up to any uh, monitor you see, okay, or any animal. He came to me and I didn't put my face to him, so that's why I trust him. I wouldn't just go stick my face somewhere. Look at this. After a downpour, do you think these Chinese box turtles are happy right now? Huh? You see this? So the Chinese box turtles, they're kind of, oh, there's a little nose right there, and they're all kind of soaking in here, which is neat. And that's why this water bottle, or water dish rather, always gets covered with sand. They track the sand and stuff in. So I usually just dump it out, spray it out, and then fill it back up. Uh, the, the water comes out of that and fills up. But here are some more of these Chinese box turtles. And it's kind of cool to see them in the water like this. They don't mind. But you notice how I have the box up on stilts? Uh, and that's because I don't want... Hey, what's up, dude? I don't want my uh, 
I don't want these guys to get inundated with water because this used to rest on the ground. And as you can imagine, when we have real bad rains, it would flood inside of here. And I don't want my Cuban iguanas getting sick or any kind of funk on them. So I raised this up out of the ground and that's how I was able to uh, kind of make sure that they're their health came first. All right, so that's the number one thing you wanna do. Uh, so if you're keeping animals outside, figure out where the low spots are on your property, see how the water behaves there, and then adjust accordingly. And, you know, obviously these guys are from areas that they get a lot of rainfall, but they're also from coastal dune areas or drier areas. So the water doesn't stagnate and sit around for a long time. So very important. And then up here, we haven't seen him in a while, but there he is. A guapo looking good. Come here, buddy. She is she not letting you in the house? What's going on, man? He loves those scratches. He loves the scratches. God, I love this lizard too, man. I've had him since 2004. August of 2004. Guapo. Uh, let's go check in with the monkey tails. And these guys are right here. Hey guys, the male's the larger one, the female there is on his left. And they're looking good and beautiful. It's, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, these guys um, are great, but they're, they're crazy. They will bite you. <laughs> so you gotta be careful with the monkey tail skinks because they are, oh look, she gets annoyed too. So I don't know, they're just, uh, I haven't figured them out. Um, once I get Solomon up, he will be more friendly and I can hold him without being worried about getting bitten. But they are beautiful and awesome animals and more nocturnal. So they come out at night, they hide in here and they're nice and dry in there uh, during the day. But this whole enclosure is going to become slinkies. So I've got a lot of work to do. And if the rain would just stop, I was, you know, the weather is starting to uh, cool off, which is nice. Hey, excuse me, sir. Would you mind terribly if I got out? That's the one downfall. Come on, I'm pushing gently. There you go. Move along, boy. Move along, move along. Come on, you loon. This is, this is, comes in handy as being mean and mean so I can get in and out. So that's what's going on. Can't wait to get to work on this. Actually, I'm gonna have to jackhammer this thing out. Not looking forward to that, my friends. Uh, anyway, it can be daunting, daunting, daunting. Um, but my friends at Aquascape make better ponds than I do. So I think Slinky deserves an aquascape ecosystem. It'll just be easier for me and better for him. Now, I wanna make sure that bottom is locked good because Slinky has been known to push on the bottom of that and that's why we have these safety doors. And I wanna build more safety doors also for Lagatha, for some of my other lizards because I just don't want any escapes. That's never good. Uh, cherry heads are good. We got a lot of cherry head eggs. Um, so that's pretty neat and I'm really excited about them. They should be hatching here uh, Probably in January is when I'm gonna have some cherry head tortoises available, but how about it? Here we are Sophia's pond all these guys we got the We got the badiger. Let's give them some food man. Let's give them some Buffet blend Okay, let's go guys. I love this. Look at it this is why I love these turtles, right? They're, they're interactive, they're fun, and they eat without any issues, and they love the buffet blend. Uh, the Reeves turtle, I don't know if you guys can see, it'll be coming out of the water. There's a bit of a reflection on the water. Here comes another Badiger borneensis, come on. And these are gonna be massive turtles soon. Well, maybe in about 10 years, but that's relatively soon if you're a turtle. So there they go, nice. So these two, uh, it's funny, these two wandered over to this pond and they'll do it on days like today where it's rainy. They get up, they wander around. Um, it's really fun. If you look over there, there's an Asian box turtle. Underneath that, let's see, I'll get it out just by throwing food. You might be able to see it. It's gonna start eating some of these pellets. There it is. There we go, way out there, I don't know. I hope you guys can see it. But... In the meantime, there we go. And there's our Reeves turtle. That is the mama of Nugget. Let's go to uh, the original ecosystem pond that Aquascape put in. 
Uh, I think these ponds are looking awesome. After a heavy rain, it just gets an influx of new water. And my gosh, look at that. They look great. So these ponds are good. Let's go ahead and feed some of these slink, ba slink berries. Can you believe that I said that? Slink berries, pink bellies. Let's see. All these cichlids and the Oscar. Where's my Oscar? There he is. He's the lonely Oscar. The other guys didn't make it, but he's hanging in there. And there's my pink belly. And there are a few pink bellies in here. There's an Asian box turtle right there. You could just walk around and see everybody's around. And now I want to check the skimmer as I often do. Uh, you guys have seen this before. It's important. I just check the skimmer to make sure that there's no uh, turtles stuck in there at all. Give them a little assist. And up, oh, look at that. See, and it's always this wood turtle. This wood turtle, they're not the strongest swimmers. So I check this and that's why I'm on hand, people. I am their daddy. I love this turtle. Just little guys that hatched in the ground. Let's put him in so he can get some food. Put him right up there and then he should smell the food, go in the water and there should be no issues. These guys are extremely friendly. A lot of fun. If you watched the video with Fred, you saw me going on and on about them. I really like these turtles. There we go. See? Oh, ooh, what's he doing there? It's a strange little kick he's got there. There we go. And sometimes, look at that, he can't submerge. Huh. Now that is interesting. Go ahead, poof. Sometimes, if they've been out of water for a while, they won't be able to submerge. So I'm going to put him right here. Let him walk around. He spends a lot of time on land, but in other times, um, if you notice your tortoise, uh, excuse me, turtle is swimming lopsided, it could be a respiratory infection. Um, but I'm not worried about this one. Usually, uh, because he was in that thing, I, I think he could have been in there for over a day. Um, sometimes uh, they they become buoyant and they have to dump air. So we'll let him figure that out. And I'll check on him again here later. Tell you what, let's go see the big galops in Aldabra. Here are the radiated. Again, they have no issues, but look at all this water, guys. No joke, man. The one good thing also is that when you do have this, this kind of rain, you wind up with a really cool mud hole for the galops. They love to soak. Now, where did Nostradamus go? He was around somewhere, but in the meantime, we can visit with the big glops. All right, there's Socrates, and here comes Darwin. And uh, they actually like when they can wallow in this mud. Darwin especially, she just moves it around. She gets real just, oh my gosh, she just loves to cover herself in all the mud. And uh, it's fun to watch. So I know these guys are nice and hydrated this week, that's for sure. And they're just doing great. So I've had no issues knock on wood with these uh, animals. We got Darwin in 2013 and she uh, was grossly overweight because she didn't get a lot of exercise in her former uh, home. And now I think she's just very svelte and good looking. So we've got no issues with our Darwin and I'm pretty happy about that. These guys, um, I tend not to feed on cold days like this, cool days. I'm gonna wait for the weather to break. Um, they can nibble on things, but here in, you know, you wanna, I wanna make sure the metabolism is always moving. Uh, so they're just naturally not gonna be as hungry. It's another thing to look for if you're keeping your animals outside and you've got a couple of rainy days. I generally don't feed on rainy days. Now see, she's not as friendly. You're gonna, she thinks everything's food. It's, it's not quite the same as a monitor. You see this? Um, I haven't figured them out, but uh, she's not as friendly as an Ostradamus, but she is letting me scratch her right now, which is nice. So this is a big deal. Uh, there we go, see? There we go, see that feels good, right? So this is nice. I get a little moment, pick a tick off of her. That happens also, we just squish a tick. Um, you know, it is what it is. I think 
these are just things maybe that's why she wants me to scratch her huh maybe she's got some ticks because in the wild as you guys know birds they allow the birds to kind of hang out and pick the ticks right off of them and then another thing that our friend sam pascucci has told me that he witnessed doing is they'll stand up real tall like this right and a bird will fly underneath them then they'll just crash down squash the bird back up and eat the bird yes did you hear that right a herbivore will every now and again get something to eat by killing an animal or scavenging so pretty interesting stuff okay well there you go let me uh take you guys out front I'll show you why I moved the sulcatas uh, about a year and a half ago now because I know it rains a lot. I want to always be conscious of their health. And remember, husbandry is going to be the number one thing uh, when you are dealing with keeping your animals healthy. If your husbandry is good, if you're keeping the animals in the way they need to, uh, need to be or as close to their natural environment as possible you're going to minimize a lot of health problems so here in florida is not where sulcatas are from although they are adaptable there are monsoonal rains in the sahel region of africa where they're from um, and they'll drink and drink and drink while there's monsoon and then the rest of the year they don't have it now even the amount of downpour we had here look at this this will not stay wet for long this is higher than the back but even here uh it's gotten flooded there's hercules he's doing really well we've seen a lot of breeding going on and then inside uh the house are all the other tortoises but it literally just stopped raining so i came out to make this video it's just been nuts man so i don't want to seem like a little ninny whinging about the rain but man it's got to stop raining soon because it's, it is, it's got to stop because I'm going to float away from it. Uh, there you have it. Okay. I just wanted to check up with you guys, give you an update on the tour, on the channel, little tour here, um, show you what's going on at the camp. There's more going on right now. Don't worry. We have more videos coming. Um, it is just been nuts. Plus you've got the whole coronavirus nonsense still kicking around. So we've got to be careful out there. All right, everyone, I hope you're doing well wherever you're at. I hope you enjoy the videos, and thanks so much for your support. I'm going to check my mailbox. Um, yeah, I'm going to check my mailbox, and I'm just making sure that people get worried that my address is showing. I don't know. Anyway, have a great day. Stay safe. Be good to animals. Be good to each other. All right? Talk to you soon. Bye.